With his amazing healing powers neutralized, will Wade Wilson stand a chance against the evil might of death grip? Well, let's hop into the pages of Deadpool issue number 5 and find out together, shall we? So then, picking up directly from where the last issue left off, Deadpool had managed to invade the inner sanctum of Death Grip, a magical cult leader obsessed with the very concept of mortality, so much to the point he was willing to fuse his own body with shards of the Muramasa Blade. One of the very few weapons in the Marvel Universe known to be able to counteract amazing healing factors like the one had by the Merc with the Mouth. Wade, to his credit, does everything in his power to fight valiantly against these insurmountable odds, but it's made abundantly clear that the deck is very much stacked against him right now. Hilariously, Death Grip actually seems to be getting sick of Deadpool's crap. Up until right now, he was actually fascinated by Wade and everything he could learn about his strange type of immortality, but now he's hung out with him for a couple minutes and realizes that he's actually pretty damn stupid, which is ultimately pretty damn relatable to someone like me. I feel like I have this effect on people all the time when they hang out with me for too long. And back over at Deadpool HQ, Ellie and Princess realize that they've once again been left in the lurch by Wade and Taskmaster. They're not going to let it go this time, and instead they opt to lean on Doug, Deadpool's newest office toady for information. Of course, he ends up folding like a cheap suit in a matter of minutes. Which is good, because Ellie was mere moments away from having a major emotional breakthrough with her distant father before all this death grip business kicked up again. Now, back at the fight, the tide keeps turning quickly. At one point, Deadpool actually seems to be doing really good. He keeps cracking jokes and breaking the fourth wall, and it drives the much more serious death grip absolutely crazy. However, this lead is quickly lost when Death Grip ends up using a bunch of energy tendrils to hold Deadpool in place. Of course, he makes a joke about Shibari. Impact play and safe words, which are very funny right up until the point he ends up getting his arm ripped off his body. And remember, he can't just heal it back. While this is going on, too, Taskmaster is also having his own fight against the collected Death Grip cult. In what ends up being a very impressive use of his power, Taskmaster taps into his muscle memory to try and recreate all the hand movements the magical cultists have been using to cast their spells. He even makes a Dominion expansion joke. I had to look that up. That's a Jujutsu Kaisen reference, right? Man, I swear I gotta watch more anime. Because Lord knows Ziggler does, and this book is absolutely jam-packed with references and Easter eggs that I'm sure I'm only getting half of. Now, even though our hero Deadpool has lost his arm and everything looks like it's going positively tits up, Wade actually ends up digging deep inside himself and finding a resolve that he never thought possible. After all, this is different than some of the other times Deadpool has fought. This time, he's actually taking things seriously because he has something to fight for. You know, something other than just himself or money. He actually took everything that Ellie had said to him before to heart. He has been keeping her at arm's length. And that he has been lying to himself. It wasn't to keep her safe. It was to try and keep himself from getting hurt in the ways that he just can't miraculously heal from. Even Death Grip himself is shocked to see this massive shift in Wade's personality this late in the fight. Ironically, the man named Grip ends up getting his arms cut off by Deadpool. Thankfully, though, he doesn't need them to cast spells as he does a patented Toriyama mouth blast. Yeah, look, see, there's an anime reference I get. Before it can be absolute curtains, though, for Deadpool, he ends up getting reinforced at the last second by the arrival of Ellie and Princess. And oh, look, Ellie even made herself a little mask modeled after her father. Again, we already know from solicitation she will be taking over the Deadpool mantle sooner rather than later, so it's nice to see them planting the seeds good and early. Ellie and Princess manage to scoop up Deadpool and even deliver the final blow to Death Grip by shooting him with one of Taskmaster's arrows, who we later found out actually stole said arrow from Hawkeye. So yeah, all in all, a pretty good first mission for the daughter of Deadpool. Wade himself even says how proud he is of her, and that he's going to let her join him on missions now, because, well, you know, if the shoe was on the other foot, he sure as hell wouldn't let anyone stop him. Of course, this is after they have one of those oh-so-dramatic, is this the end of Deadpool, only for him to break the fourth wall and go, man, that was pretty dramatic, wasn't it? Still, though, Wade isn't walking away from this battle unscathed. His limbs haven't grown back yet, and he doesn't know if they'll ever grow back. This is magic and Muramasa stuff on a level that Wade is just simply not used to. Thankfully, though, he 
doesn't have to do it alone anymore. He has his two daughters, and he has Taskmaster, who, while he can't pay him, Wade vows to make Tony an official part of the family and the impromptu CEO of Deadpool's new mercenary corporation. And oh, what a happy little dysfunctional family they are as the comic comes to a close. And so that was Deadpool issue number five, and hats off to Cody Ziegler because I think he ends up sticking the landing on this one in a real good way. Wade goes through the strong sort of character arc that he doesn't normally get to do in storylines like this, bringing Ellie back into his life and making her such a strong central figure in the Deadpool book moving forward was an A-plus idea. And one that, again, judging by solicitations, looks like they're only going to be fleshing out further. Deadpool can't heal anymore, and even though he's still alive, he won't be able to do all the same things. Transversely, his daughter is coming into her powers, and while she can do some pretty amazing things, she can't do everything her dad did, which means they'll have to work together as both a family and a team to make it all happen. Even Taskmaster himself gets a small little mini-arc here as he goes from money-hungry mercenary to actually full-on friend and member of the Wilson family. I am a little shocked that they did away with Death Grip so early. I really did assume that he was going to be the kind of villain who was going to be here for the long haul, but in the end, he ends up being more of a villain that helps transition Wade to this brand new status quo. Hell, if this book moving forward is going to be about Deadpool the Family Man, I would love to see Kid Apocalypse show back up again as he is another big part of Wade's life that doesn't always get mentioned. Overall, I think I feel comfortable giving this issue a solid 8 out of 10. Deadpool is in very good hands right now, and I can't wait to see what Cody Ziegler has planned next for this series moving forward. Hey there everyone, it's your pal Kate Jewel again, and if you're seeing my face right now, that means you watched at the end of the video, and I'll always be grateful for that. Retention helps in this crazy YouTube game, and so does becoming a patron. If you head on down to the description, you can find a link to my Patreon page. Recently just redid all the tiers, a lot of cool stuff offering up there, exclusive commentaries, exclusive polls, uh, behind-the-scenes concept art for Capes and Quest, that's the brand new D&D show I've started soon. Never been a better time to become a patron. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month and help the channel grow and you know help me continue to deliver content like what you just saw so i want to thank you all and i will see you again next time bye bye